Shh. Be quiet. Don't say that. What did I say? Chill. Relax. The Impossible Conversation Podcast. Let's talk. Welcome to the Art of the Conversation. This is Coach Sarita. And I'm Amira Hester. And we are here to shift generations through, through impossible, impossible conversations. conversations. So excited about this episode. This episode is the Art of the Conversation. Mm-hmm. And as we know, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Absolutely. The tongue is the smallest member of the body, but it holds the most power. It has the ability to build up or to cut down. So I just wanted to let you know, like last week when we decided that we were going to talk about this topic, it got me so excited. I started to do a little bit of research around conversations and I ran across the 738.55 rule. Hmm. What's that? Yeah, same thing I was thinking. The 738.55 rule is that 7% of our communication is verbal, 38% is tone, 55% is nonverbal. So I would have thought nonverbal and verbal would have been reversed. Absolutely. I was thinking the same exact thing. I thought that, you know, people would actually believe what I say, Mm -hmm. not necessarily the way I say it or the tone I was using. But for me, it kind of makes sense because a lot of people say that my tone could come across as like a little bit aggressive. Just a little bit. Sometimes I'm like a little (laughs) pit bullish, but my intention, my motive is always pure. And I try to do a really good job at um, editing myself before I have the conversation Mm -hmm. so that it doesn't come across quite as aggressive. Mm -hmm. But it's been told to me that it's like a gut punch. But once they go back, Mm -hmm. they realize like the information is really powerful. I definitely agree. I definitely agree. And I feel (laughs) like for me, it makes sense because I was told a lot that my facial expressions come across judgy. Um, I'm not really sure what that means, but the statistics prove they might be right. It's a little judgy. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, just every now and again, you might throw your eyes up in your head or, you know, you look off into space when someone's talking to you. So I can kind of see how they can think that you're judgy. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's necessarily coming from a place of judgmental. I think for you, it's more like you're really processing the information because you are such a deep thinker which is why um, I really wanted you to be a part of this experience with me because you being as youthful as you are, you have just a wisdom about yourself because you actually listen to what people say versus just chiming in with a nod of agreement. I don't think that's really so helpful. I think people really wanna know that people are listening to them and that they're giving positive feedback when they're telling them a story. Absolutely. So that's why I think you come across as really powerful. And it's it's really important that we do this in every conversation that we have. Especially tough conversations. Especially tough conversations. Yeah. And a lot of that is going on right now with tough conversations. I can just think of the way I converse with my husband. Mm-hmm. So my conversation style is I kind of do like this layering approach. So mm-hmm. what happens is, you know, I'll ask my husband to do something. Uh-huh. And he may do two out of three of the things that I asked him to do. You hit the men. Well, you know, you know how that works. I mean, it really is true. They are from Morris. But I'll start off asking him, you know, take out the trash and then can you hang the blinds and then can you run to the market for me? So he'll get two of the things done. So mm-hmm. when I come home from the office, I'll be like, oh, babe, how much, you know, did you get everything done? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, okay, I'm looking in the refrigerator. The food's not there. So I'll start off really positive mm-hmm. and I'll say, oh my God, thank you so much. You were able to, you know, clean up the house for me, which is really good. But then I'll layer it in the middle with, but you didn't go to the market. But then I'll end off with, Something but you took the trash again. out. Right, exactly. Right, so right. I think that kind of makes a person feel good. Mm-hmm. If you don't just bombard them with the negative thing mm-hmm. that they did, but you kind of layer it, you layer it with, you know, positive, negative, positive. And I like that because I think it's important to acknowledge the good in people or the good that they're doing. It's not always a bad thing I always like to say I never like to use the word always and never even though they're in that very phrase but I just don't find them to be as consistent as the definition of the word right um but I like that that uh conversation preface that you do I have my own preface and technique that I'm into um where I like to sort of 
set intentions to the person that I'm going to talk to. So say if I'm going to have a tough conversation with a friend, I'll say, you know, I really value our friendship. You know, you know that I love you. I'm only telling you this to make you better. Mm -hmm. Things like that so that their walls can come down, their defenses come down, and they know that I'm coming from the best place as possible. So you give objectives for your conversation. I like that. Objectives. Yeah. I okay. Like that. I mean, and you know what? Now that you said it, I don't do that when I converse, mm -hmm. but I may start to do it because I think my husband is starting to realize the sandwich approach. Get a little old. Just a little bit because, <laughs> you know, it's like he he'll smile and then he'll brace himself for the gut punch because uh -huh, uh -huh. then he knows it's coming in uh -huh. with a second. You got to switch it up. Yeah, him. I got to switch it up on him. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do that, that objective thing that you do. I'll start off with, you know, the goal of our conversation and then, you know, kind of ease into giving them the tough news. I have another technique that I do as well. I call it setting the scene. Hmm. And, you know, for my boyfriend, um, he likes a little bit more of a calm space. And I think that our partners always want the best for us. They always have the best intentions for us. So I never like to come to him when I am angry in the moment. So right. I'll wait until I'm in a calmer space. I've thought about it a little bit longer. And I'll first say, like when we're having like, sit watch tv time movie time you know when we're a lot more calmer enjoying a snack and i'll say to him you know babe i really didn't like when you uh -oh. did whatever you did uh, it's coming and he handles the bad news a little bit better because it's a calmer setting and i like to reassure him i'm not upset about it anymore i've thought about it i knew your intentions weren't right. to hurt me i knew it wasn't to make me upset and it just makes him feel a lot better whereas with a girlfriend i know that i have a specific girlfriend that likes a little drink every now and then mm -hmm. so i'll wait till we're having a wind down and you know we got a little bit of liquid coverage in us mm -hmm. and then i'm able to tell her the information or deliver the information from a much better place and she in a better place to, to receive, receive it the information it's about, so, i mean realistically yeah. because we may have an intention of saying it one way mm -hmm. but it's the way it's received so i mean i think that approach works really well also because it's not in the heat of the moment right so it gives everybody some time and some space to be able to say oh okay i had forgot about that or i didn't think it was a big deal or whatever you thought it was mm -hmm. you now get to get it off of your plate mm -hmm. because the person knows how you felt about it yep. and that person receives it from a better place because it's not in the heat of the mm -hmm. moment so i think that's all very important um and i just want to say that this segment is brought to you by executive management supports coordination where we serve individuals in their homes who have physical and intellectual disabilities if you need assistance with that reach out to executivemanagement.com Our next conversation culprit, SMS oh God. versus email versus text messaging. I feel this can go either so right. Or we need a whole episode for this so one. Wrong. I know. I don't even know why we decided that we can only do this in a half an episode. Because right. There are so many ways for this to go wrong. And I mean, my biggest pet peeve, of course, because, you know, having businesses and receiving floods of emails every mail. single day. When someone does not greet me in an email, Ooh. did we have this conversation? Did we start in the way? Did, did I say something? They really have you wondering. I mean, I'm just sitting here like perplexed. Like, how do you not put a greeting in your email? Mm -hmm. I agree. It happens all the time. But my second is when you email me in all caps. Oh, like they're yelling at you. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm floored. I'm like, why would someone? So then it's like an automatic workshop. There's an automatic training. There's memos that are going out. Like, this is not communication etiquette. And how about if they put all caps and they put a little explanation point at the end? How see, you like that? See, you, you didn't even have to go there because <laughs> that right there, I'm done. Like, I literally had to step away from the computer, give myself five minutes before I respond back. And I'm like, if you ever do this again, okay, all right. But... I digress, those are like my biggest email culprits. I mean, as far as text messaging is concerned, that's so much left up to interpretation. I mean, like there's so many ways you can interpret text messaging that, you know, it could not have been that way, but based off of the 738.55 that we just learned about, you don't have that nonverbal piece to be able to say, oh, well, her eyes were up in her head, mm -hmm. or no, she was just speaking genuinely. Yeah. And then you don't have the ability to see the tone of the yeah. text message. Yeah. So you can't even base it off of those parameters that we talked about earlier in this episode. And I just feel like some conversations aren't meant to be had via text. Like, I think That's some true. conversations need to be face-to-face -face or at least voice calls. I can agree. Like, you know, I think I had a friend tell me she was talking to a guy, and um, they were, you know, discussing the future, and he was just asking her, you know, how come... 
you know, you don't have any kids. And, you okay. know, she was just telling him, like, I, I want that and that's going to come. Is that I'm just, married? The friend's not married, not married, but you know, okay. this generation is a little different in that in that area. A lot of areas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So she told him, you know, I'm looking for the right guy. I don't want to just have a kid with anybody. And right. of course, like you said, I want to be married. His response was more so in support of that saying, you know, when the right guy comes, you know, I'm sure you'll have kids, you know, it'll be amazing. Okay. And you know, when she came to me, she kind of was like, I feel a little weird that he didn't insert himself into my future. Okay. And, you know, the way that I interpreted the message was he was taking what she was saying seriously, taking the conversation seriously, and he was not trying to take that time to be selfish and think about himself. Right. So, you know, it was two ways you could have looked at that. But again, what my point is, is some conversations just aren't meant to have via text. And I think that was a big one. I mean, because I could kind of see where your friend was going with that. Like, dang, well, if we are like in a relationship and we're trying to grow and be something, mm -hmm. Wouldn't you kind of think that maybe you and I might potentially possibly maybe, but once again, it's left up to per perception mm -hmm. because unfortunately we don't have those nonverbals. We don't have that tone to mm -hmm. be able to say that's exactly what he meant. So mm -hmm. it, it can go, the conversation can go real right or it can go real wrong. Mm -hmm. And I'm just such a deep thinker and yeah. just really a big an analyst. Mm -hmm. um, so I did get one text message that I don't think could have been interpreted in any other way except rude. Oh. So I was going to babysit a friend's kid. You know, we had discussed it briefly, never really set anything in stone. It wasn't for sure. And um, she texted me and she just said straight out, sorry, you going to watch my kid or not? Mm. Just like that. So I replied like, that was rude. No, you didn't. I did. No, you didn't. Oh, I did. No, I did. Oh, no. You just text back that was rude. Wow, that was you rude. You didn't say yes, you didn't say no. No. I have to address the problem. You don't just ask for a favor straight out like that. And and let me remind you, it was a favor, so. Okay, let me just tell you how I would have responded to Yeah, it. what would you have said? I mean, I would have just, I try to respond in the way I want to receive. Mm -hmm. So I would have started off with, hi, such and such. Um, yes, I can watch your child on Tuesday as we previously discussed thank you, have a good day, or see you soon. I, I understand your get to the point and mm -hmm. drive home the message that that was rude and abrasive. However, I just try to always come from a place of how I would want to receive the information. It, 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 so it's kind of like nonverbal verbals. Kind of. Okay. Kind of. I okay. mean, yeah, it, it's, it's really a crazy thing because I had the same type of a situation that happened with um, my landscaper. He just responded, can I come pick up payment? Mm -hmm. Okay, I do owe you. Right. So I had to process that, like, okay, I, I do owe you the money. But there's just a way to say things. So, you know, I responded back to him. Hi, James. Yes, I'll be available at 4 p.m. for you to pick up your payment. Mm -hmm. And then he just responded back, thank you. So my hope is that mm -hmm. ultimately you'll realize, like, some of these rude text messaging behaviors, like, maybe you'll start to change them or see them change as a result of the way we respond to individuals. Yeah. So, I mean, conversation is very important. Like we started off the segment by saying, it's like the tongue is a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. We can bless people or curse people with it. And the Lord gives us the ability to speak positively into people's lives. Absolutely. So as we go about having conversations in whatever form it is, be it verbal, be it written, be it, I literally pray before I send out any message because the way I think about it is, if I was on the receiving end, would I like to receive it that way? Right. And not that I always get it right, because there's been times where I was like, oh, you probably should have waited 24 hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you were just that key that I can see you, girl, you were in your feelings. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I would have to say that me just taking that little prayer pause mm -hmm. to say, Lord, this message is going out to your child. How do you want them to receive it? Right. Has really saved me a lot of clients, mm -hmm. has saved me a lot of arguments, and mm -hmm. I think just makes me feel better as a person. Mm -hmm. And I think it's most frustrating for me because, like I said, I care a lot about how I'm received. I just want people to know what my intentions are and where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. So I will literally write a whole message out, delete it, start over again, ask somebody how would they, would they receive this well. Mm -hmm. So it's like me putting all of that thought, it's kind of like, you got the nerve to just text me like this, mm -hmm. like, you know? But yeah. I also have to keep in mind that people aren't me. I think it's right. very important that pe to understand that people aren't me. They're not gonna think about things the way I think about things. So yeah, I try to keep that separation. And I mean, and even to that point, 
you know, love believes the best. Absolutely. Like that's one of the biggest life lessons that I've learned is that love believes the best. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. the way you think that people are going to receive information. It's the way that you give the information. That's the most important thing. Right. And to just know that, especially for individuals you already have a relationship with, mm -hmm. that they are good people at their core. Mm -hmm. Like I have actually written down a hundred positive things about my husband mm. just so that I can remember during those times where he pisses me off mm -hmm. and he can piss you off. Not as often as he used to. Okay. I mean, okay. You know, married, acknowledging. But, okay. Yeah, acknowledging the good. Married, you know, certain things you're just like, uh, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But I've written down a hundred things that are positive about him mm -hmm. because those times where he does piss me off mm -hmm. and I'm like, I can't believe he did that. I can pull up an actual tangible document to and say, say, oh, but this, oh, go. but this, there and oh, go. but that. There you go. I because like you that. know the devil will sit on your shoulder and say, I can't believe he did that. That is so, like, that's ridiculous. He told you he was going to do that. He didn't even do it. Mm -hmm. And da, 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 da. But then it's like, no, 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 Satan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got the record. And the record says that he's a great husband. He's a great father. He's a great provider. He's a So then once now his account is in the positive it moves from being in the negative. Mm -hmm. Love believes best. I really, really love like that. Best. Could you like elaborate on what that means more? I really want to want that to stick for our viewers because that's such an important lesson that I try to keep in my mind all the time as yeah. I encounter each and every person. Not even just loved ones, people that I know. Yes. I mean, people out in the street. Love just believes best. It's yes. not even about the love that you share with that person. Mm -hmm. It's God's love. So could you go into that just a little bit more? So what it really boils down is to what the Bible says. You want to treat people the way you want to be treated. Okay. And how that manipulates itself in the universe is to just say, I'm going to relate to people with the love of the Lord. I'm not going to relate to them with my love right. because my love is flawed. Mm -hmm. My love is manipulative. Mm -hmm. My love is judgmental. Mm -hmm. The Lord's love is not that way. He does not see us as the mistakes that we make. He doesn't mm -hmm. see us as the problems that we have. Mm -hmm. He sees us as his child. And how much do you love your child? Mm -hmm. I have four children. I love each and every one of them. Everything that they do is not perfect, but I love each and every one of them. Nothing could they ever do that would make me not love them. So the Lord is our ultimate father. Mm -hmm. So in the same way that we love our biological kids that he gave us to take care of, this is the way that he loves each and every one of us. So if you look at another person and say, that's God's child, mm -hmm. how much does he love that child? Mm -hmm. The same way that you love your child. Mm -hmm. And guess what you'll do now? You'll treat that person a little bit better. You'll give them some grace and some mercy. You'll allow them to make mistakes. You'll allow them to make flaws. You'll understand that today just wasn't a good day for that person. Yep. Because we don't know what each other is experiencing. Absolutely. We don't know what people are doing in their daily lives. We don't know what they go through in their homes mm -hmm. to get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. So if we just give them a little bit of grace and mercy, mm -hmm. extend that grace and mercy mm -hmm. to them on that day, then guess what will happen? The world will be a much better place. I love that, Sarita. Thank you so much for that. I love that lesson. I mean, because we can't hear what we don't reveal. Right. Absolutely. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Coach Sarita and me on Instagram at Amira Hester underscore and check us both out on Instagram and YouTube at The Impossible Conversation. Like, comment, and subscribe. See you See guys there. there.